Hi friends, welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. And I'm going to jump in and show you the dried and resined results. So here she is. And just check out those interference pigments. Check out the comet here, giving us that beautiful gold. And then to the red shift there. And then also in our nice background, we have the sparkly starry night background and then the beautiful nebula here too. So how did I get to this and what colors did I use? Well, let me run through them with you. We have first of all, first of all, it's Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents and this is the gold mine. And then we are going to be using the TLP Nebula. That's the lovely dark bit with the green blue color shift to it. And after Comet, <laughs> after Nebula, we are using Comet, one of my all time favorites, of course. And this is the beautiful interference, dual interference, gold and red. And then next I'm using this one, the PBO Studio Acrylics, and this is the iridescent blue, red or red blue rather. And after I mixed it, I wanted to give it a little bit more of a punch of the interference blue. So I added some of this little piggy and this one is velvet, the interference blue. So just to give it a little bit more of a punch. And then we're finishing on the prism violet. Uh, this is the uh, semi-opaque gouache and we are going to be using our titanium white cell activator. Okay then friends, that's enough of me jibber jabbering and waffling on. We're going to get the camera pointing down and we're going to get on with painting, okay? Okay then my friends, first thing I should say is this is a 10 inch round canvas and that's about three and a half, maybe four ounces of black Sherwin-Williams uh, tricorn black in the color to go. And I've also added some of the Rust-Oleum glitter paint in the iridescent finish. So we're gonna get some lovely multicolored sparkles in the background if we manage to keep any of the negative space. So just using the last bit of it up and uh, using just a little bit too much pillow really, to be honest, but there's only one thing worse than using too much, and that's not using enough. <laughs> so I'm just going to give the pillow just a little spin out, just to let it find its own level. And I'm just going to use my palette knife here and bring the pillow all the way to the edge of the canvas. I've seen quite a few artists just leave the puddle of pillow on their canvas or on their cradle and um, they seem to have great results. When I've done it, I get left with a kind of a ring mark where the canvas or cradle has been absorbing the pillow paint and uh, kind of leaves a ring mark underneath the design when it dries. And I don't like that very much and I find that this eliminates it. So I have a few bubbles there and as you can see, just hold it nice and steady and give it a few solid taps on your spinner top and that should get the, the air bubbles out of the pillow. And as you can see me now just using my palette knife to measure the four corners or the four edges rather to make sure that my round canvas is perfectly centered. So as we just get ready to start putting the first colors down, I would love to tell you about our group on Facebook the Acrylic Crazy Train. Please search us out there and join us. We have many wonderful artists from all over the world just willing and waiting to help you and very happily watch you succeed. So that's the Acrylic Crazy Train. Thank you, friends. So in we go for a close-up, my friends. And the first colour we're using here is Rust-Oleum. Uh, they're metallic accents. And this colour is called Gold Mine. So as you see, I'm not putting a great deal down. I'm desperately trying to remember to use less colors so we get some negative space. But as I guess we can all relate, it's difficult. <laughs> and I put some more of the rust <laughs> him down. It's difficult to, uh, to remain conservative with the colors. 
Now this beautiful color, this is the uh, TLP, the Nebula. This is a lovely dark kind of charcoal color with a beautiful green blue interference flash to it. Now, I'm sorry if you can hear the thunder <laughs> that's happening at the moment. We're having some great storms up here in British Columbia on the mountain where I live. Uh, so yes, if you hear some rumbles and some crashes in the background, it's not Vanna, it's not the cat, it's actually thunder and a fantastic storm happening. So there you go, my friends, you see me using the nebula and just putting down a couple of extra lines outside of where we swipe so we can use these to modify it and make some pretty patterns. You might also notice that the lines I've put down are a little thicker than usual and we will see what happens when you lay a little more extra paint down than a thin stripe for the frosty mods. And as you can see there, this is the next color. This is the beautiful Comet by TLP. A dual interference red uh, and gold. And as you can see again, I'm putting quite thick lines down. So after we modify these and then when we spin them, they are gonna grow quite large and actually uh, the line itself the thickness of the lines are going to grow and that's what helps give us those lovely kind of almost leaf pattern to the modification we saw at the beginning so while i'm waffling on i've been putting down pbo iridescent red blue and this is the one that i added some tlp velvet to which is their interference blue just to give the uh, pbo a little more punch now this one is the Liquitex and this is the gouache in the uh, prism violet. As you can see, just adding a couple of thin little lines here and just adding a thin drizzle to our swiping area. So the cell activator we're using today is the Shelley Art recipe of Australian Floetrol and Amsterdam Standard Acrylic Paints. If you'd like to know what the Shelley Art uh, course is. It's an online course, uh, a critic pouring course that I highly recommend and I also have a 15% off discount code which I shall put up on the screen right now. So there we go my friends, as you can see I am just loading up the palette knife and getting some of the cell activator on. We're using the titanium white uh, uh, I was considering using the Rust-Oleum Goldmine as a cell activator. It makes a fantastic cell activator itself. But in the end, I opted for, I opted for the Titanium White. And in we go, friends. And in we go for a nice close-up at double speed so we can watch those cells forming as the uh, white cell activator sinks through those colors. And I say it most times, but wow. I really love this art form. It's so versatile. It's uh, absolutely fantastic and uh, a fantastic form of therapy for me and entertainment for uh, you guys. So when we go with some modifications, you can see I'm doing the large kind of spirals and then back into the middle, create a little swirl and then out. So just deciding where to actually start. And here we go. These modifications just literally zigzags backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and then circles at the end to end up with a lovely little spiral in the middle of that modification. And another little one there too. Don't forget friends, you've always got to clean your uh, modification tool. I use a tooth toothpick, but uh, each time you modify, you must remember to wipe it Otherwise, you run the risk of dragging the old colors through the new. So I'm really loving what's happening there, right on the edge of the canvas, but we are going to lose that. Just kind of getting the design into the middle. And before we spin, uh, for those that are watching for the first time or those that don't know what I'm doing here, this is called wetting the edges. So I get a little bit of the pillow paint and I make sure the edge of the canvas or the cradle is wet with paint because when I spin this, this helps the paint reach the edge of the canvas and then flow nicely over and down onto my board, containing all the excess paint and stopping it from splattering 
all around the kitchen where I work and over the cat and upsetting Vanna. So when we go for the first spin, you see guys, the clockwise spin. I'm not sure how important it is to do the clockwise, then the anti-clockwise spin. It's just something I've always done and I get good results. So if I'm explaining to you how I'm doing this, I might as well explain fully. But there we go after the first spin. Wow. <laughs> the interference colors, the, the, the comet there and the way it's playing with the playing with the nebula and then the prism violet. Absolutely love it. Beautiful. But we can't leave it like this, I'm afraid. It's too much paint. So we can see there's still quite a lot of movement. So we're gonna have to go for another spin. Excellent, and while we're waiting for this, I'd love to remind you guys about the Sunday Fun Day, the crazy, uh, the acrylic crazy train, where I and all the other admins from the group get together and we have a fantastic premiere series lasting all afternoon on Sundays. Live every Sunday, starting with me, the joy of pouring with Cy Frost. So here we go for a lovely close up on the piece. Absolutely gorgeous. Really couldn't hope or wish that it came out any better. Wow, and there's a little bit more thunder. So here you go, guys. Here's a nice close-up. Or oh, kind of a panned out close-up, and you can see the pigments working beautifully. And in we go for the nice close-up so you can get a nice look at those cells and the interference pigments working with the other paints. Apologies for the light wing glare. This is something we are going to remedy as soon as we can. So in for another lovely close-up, my friends. Just look at the fade and those beautiful jelly beans. So thank you for joining me, my friends. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please visit my Facebook store if you like what you see here. And as always, happy pouring.